Hello, my name is Grant Kramer, and I am a professor emeritus at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I will be continuing my series on my backyard vineyard. This will be about the iron deficiency problems that occur in highly alkaline soils like my backyard. My Backyard Vineyard Season 1, Episode 5, Iron Deficiency and Application. So iron deficiency symptoms did develop in the first year. My soil pH was 7.7 .7 before planting, which is way too high. I needed to make soil adjustments to lower the pH. pH can be lowered using sulfur. So I will add a soil acidifier to slowly adjust the pH downwards over time. And if iron deficiency symptoms show up, then I'll spray with an iron chelate. So let's first talk a little bit about iron uptake and the lowering of the soil pH through soil chemistry. So iron uptake in plants occurs as the ferrous ion, Fe2+, and not the Fe3+, which is the oxidized form. So even though there is plenty of iron in the soil, it's not available if the pH is not in the correct format. So Fe2 plus iron uptake is low when the pH goes above 7.5. And ideally, we want our pH around 6.5 for optimum nutrient absorption by all nutrients, including iron. So the pH of the soil can be lowered significantly with elemental sulfur, but not with sulfate salts, such as ammonium sulfate. Yes, ammonium sulfate will lower the pH over time, but this is because the plant is excreting protons with this type of salt. With elemental sulfur, the elemental sulfur is converted to sulfuric acid by sulfur bacteria in the soil. And this is much, much more effective than any sulfate salts. So the traditional way of acidifying a soil is by using elemental sulfur. And in this chart below, you can see the amount of pounds of 100% sulfur that needs to be added per acre to change the pH. So we have on the left-hand side the change in pH that we desire. If the soil is at 8.5, we want to bring it down to 6.5, 8 to 6.5. In my case, the soil is close to 7.5, so we're going from 7.5 to 6.5, and then 7 to 6.5. And we have different types of soils, and each soil requires a different amount of sulfur depending on the type. So sands have the lowest need for sulfur, whereas clays need the highest amount to change the pH. So in our case, the little box that's yellowed is the amount of sulfur that's needed on my clay soils in my backyard to convert my pH down from 7.5 to 6.5, the desired optimum. Now again, I'm at 7.7, .7, but uh, it's not going to all change in one year anyhow. This is a process that takes place gradually up to a year for the pH to finally change. And this is because it's being converted by organisms, the sulfur bacteria, which are dependent upon the temperature of the soil, the moisture in the soil, and the aeration of the soil. One of my holes for each vine amounts to about 1.5 cubic feet of soil. Since there are 43,560 cubic feet per acre foot of soil, then I would need 1,500 pounds for an acre, and we'll divide that by the 43,560 cubic feet per acre, and that amounts to then I need to add 0 0.34 pounds of sulfur per hole. So I couldn't use a powdery type 
elemental sulfur 100% in my holes when I'm planting plants right away. That would likely burn the vines, and so I use this organic soil acidifier that I got at the local hardware store, which has this composition. It has a total composition of 30% sulfur. 18% of it is the free sulfur, which is the most effective sulfur, and 12% represent combined sulfur, which would be something like gypsum. So to change the pH, let's say it's approximately 30% sulfur, that would mean I only have about one third of the sulfur I need per pound. So two cups of this soil acidifier is equal to about one third pound of sulfur. Therefore, I'm going to need about two cups of this soil acidifier per each of my holes. So you can see on the right here how I scooped out a cup of sulfur. The two cups worth of this was added to each pile of soil that was mixed before the plants were planted. This will start to slowly acidify the soil over time. So um, as a matter of fact, during the season, after approximately a month, I started to see the development of iron deficiency symptoms like this. This is called intervenal chlorosis. It happens in the young leaves first and not the older leaves. This is already fairly developed. So this is a sign that the sulfur has not fully lowered the pH to make the iron fully available. And it may be necessary in the coming season or seasons to add more sulfur to the soil to continue this process of acidification of the soil. So in the meantime, we will add a foliar spray of iron chelate, as this one is one I am using. The chelate is in the form of EDDHA. There's also EDTA. I'm using the EDDHA form as it's a little bit more soluble and a little bit more effective in absorption into the plant. You can see how I'm making it up. It's a form of a powder. I take one teaspoon of this chelate, which is 6%, and add it to a gallon of water. I mix that all up, or shake it very well, and then add it to a hand sprayer here because my vineyard's small enough that I'm only applying small amounts of it. I'll just simply spray it by hand. As the vines get larger, I'm gonna probably switch over to a larger sprayer to be able to get the whole canopy. But at this point, the plants are small enough that they can be sprayed just fine with a hand sprayer. Okay, here we have a vine showing some iron deficiency. We can see a sort of yellowing in the leaves, a little bit of intervenal chlorosis. We're gonna take a little bit of iron and I'm gonna spray it on the leaves and watch it green up. Intervenal chlorosis is already disappearing after one day. Day two after spraying this vine with iron chelate. Day three after spraying with iron chelate. After 11 days, you can see that this vine shows no signs of iron deficiency. So in summary, iron deficiency did develop in my vines despite adding an acidifier in the soil before planting. The iron deficiency was able to be corrected by using an iron chelate spray. So once the vines were sprayed, the leaves began to green up after spraying with the iron chelate spray, which is a direct indicator that they were iron deficient and not deficient in some other micronutrient such as manganese. The long-term solution here is to continue to acidify the soil each year and supplement with iron chelate spray as necessary. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful or you really did like it, then 
please like it on my YouTube channel as it will encourage others to view this video as well and give them an opportunity to see some of the other videos that they might not be aware of. Have a great day.